Hello! Welcome to the giant query video of doom. <laughs> now, uh, this is going to be a long one, guys, because uh, I am talking about every possible thing you could need to know about queries. Um, and having said that, I'm sure I'm going to forget about something. But I'm going to be going over a lot of information. I already covered what a query is and some of the basic formulas in a previous video, which I will link down below. And as promised, today I'm going to be digging into all the nitty gritty details. Starting with length, grammar, and usage, which I know are your favorite things about the English language because they're certainly mine. <laughs> I, um, I barely paid attention to that unit in school. I was a super overachiever except when it came to grammar. Your query should be between 200 and 250 words. That's no more than a page. So pop that puppy into Word, and if it's more than a page, you should be trimming. Grammar, spelling, and usage is important. It's not the most important thing, but it does matter. Hello, cat. This is Teddy. Uh, our last video featured PETA. This is Teddy. I'm named after Harry Potter. Lupin. Uh, cat. So... So I guess it's a new thing having cats in my query videos, right? It's 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 because they like uh, hanging out on my desk, which I I don't actually use for writing. So you know it's a good thing it gets some sort of use. So your grammar, usage, and spelling aren't the most important thing about your query, but they do matter. A query is a business letter. It is the first impression that you're going to make with an agent. So if you have a slew of misspellings or really sloppy grammar and usage, they're going to assume that the same problems exist in your pages. So you want to put your best foot forward and polish. Now, one or two typos isn't going to sink your query, so don't pull your hair out if you find one after you've sent it. Agents know that we're human and that we make mistakes. In my previous video, I talked basic query formula. Remember, the hook, the book, and the cook, character conflict and stakes. In addition to this, you're gonna have what I call the book essentials paragraph. It can come before the meat of your query or after. It's up to you. There are different query formulas to follow. But this paragraph is going to have the name of your book written in all caps. That is industry standard. The book's genre and the word count. It would be a sentence like, Brightly Burning is a YA science fiction novel complete at 80,000 words. My book was longer than that, but I just <laughs> pulled that out of, out, of, out of my head. Next, you want to cover who your book would appeal to. You may have heard this as comps. Comps are completely optional. You don't have to compare your book to other books in the genre or market, but you probably should. Comps demonstrate to an agent that you're well-read and that you understand the market. Book comps should represent where your book would sit on the shelf at a bookstore, but you can also use media comps to give a sense of tone, tropes, or feel. You can also kitchen sink it and have media comps and book comps, as I have done in the past because I'm all about comparative titles. But essentially, this is a line of your query that gives the agent a sense of who your book would appeal to as well. You can in fact say, it will appeal to fans of Stephanie Perkins and Veronica Roth. I don't know what that book would be. I, I just pull those two names out of thin air. But that's the type of thing that you can say if you can't think of specific books. I'm going to do an entire video about comps because there's so much to say about them. But that is comps in a nutshell. Double cat. <laughs> Your book essentials paragraph is also where you might want to indicate whether or not your book is part of a series. You should say, it is a standalone with series potential. Those are the magic words. You don't want to say, it is the first in a trilogy and must be a series. That can freak an agent out. They always want to know that your book can stand alone. Now for personalization. Much like comps, personalization is optional. This is where at the start of your query, you tell an agent why you're querying them. Don't freak out if you don't have anything specific to say. And in fact, if you don't have anything specific to say, don't personalize. Just start your query off with the book. There's nothing wrong with that. But in the event you do have something particular to say, maybe you read an interview that really like resonated with you or you followed them on Twitter and there are specific things about their personality on Twitter that speak to you. Or if you genuinely love one of their client books, if you met them at a conference, this is where you're gonna use the personalization. Personalization is also the spot where you would say if you're responding to a manuscript wish list, and I advise linking to the tweet so they know which one that you mean, or if they faved your tweet in a pitch contest, etc. 
An important thing to remember with personalization is that you need to be genuine. If you're pulling things out of thin air and trying too hard, that's exactly how you're gonna come across. Try hard, and that could leave a bad impression. When in doubt, just don't personalize. But always check agent guidelines because there are a few agents who specifically request personalization, so you always wanna follow the guidelines. Personalization will always come at the beginning of your query, and in cases where you choose to personalize, I advise combining your personalization with your book essentials paragraph, making that the first paragraph of your query before going into your hook, book, cook, etc. Speaking of the cook, let's talk all about that bio paragraph. Your bio paragraph is always going to come after you've talked about your book. Don't front load your query with who you are. As I mentioned in the basics video, that is the least important part of your query because agents care about your book. I know what some of you are thinking. You don't have anything to put in your bio paragraph. You've never done anything and this is your first novel. <sighs> Deep breaths, it is okay. Your bio paragraph can be incredibly simple and frankly, the shorter the better. But if you do have a slew of relevant publishing credits, this is the place to put them. It could. Think about any short stories or articles you've had published. If you've been previously agented, this is also where you're going to put that information. One small note, there is no need to say that this is your first novel. The agent is going to assume unless you tell them about other publishing credits. I hinted at it before when we were talking about personalization. I mentioned agent guidelines, and this leads me to the number one most important rule of writing queries. Follow the guidelines. Seriously, I can't emphasize enough. If you do your research and follow the agent's guidelines for querying, you are going to be better than most people who query. I've heard varying quotes from agents, but some say as much as 60, 70, 80% of the queries they receive do not follow their guidelines. Typically, there are some guidelines that 99% of agents follow. So as a rule, never include an attachment when you query. If an agent asks for pages, you're gonna copy and paste those pages into the body of your email underneath your query. On that note, be sure to only include the number of pages that the agent requests. Some only ask for the first few pages, others ask for five, 10, those numbers are pretty standard. Find a good place to stop. If you have to include six pages instead of five or 11 instead of 10, you're fine. But don't push it trying to include 15 or 20 pages. They're going to figure it out. You can find agents' query guidelines on their website, whether that's their personal website or their agency website. You can also check Publishers Marketplace if they have a page or Query Tracker. If you're finding guidelines on Query Tracker, I do always advise double checking the agency or agent website to make sure that they are the most up to date query rules. After your bio paragraph, you're going to close out your query very simply. You can just say, thank you for your consideration. You don't need to say that you look forward to hearing from them or that you can send them pages on request because both of those things are assumed. You'll want to sign with your real name. Even if you're using a pen name, sign as your real name and you can say writing as and then include your pen name. Under your signature, include your phone number and any relevant social media handles. A lot of agents like to check out potential clients on social media, so don't make it hard for them. I like to include my Twitter handle. Some of you won't want to include your phone number, and I completely understand. But it's easier if you do. If an agent reads your material and is really exciting, they might want to call you right away. But if you don't include your phone number, it's not a deal breaker. I just recommend it. Similar to how important it is to have proper spelling, grammar, and usage in your query, you need to consider professionalism. Here are the biggest do's and don'ts of querying. Never mass email agents. Querying should be an individualized process. Most agents, if they see that they've been CC'd or BCC'd on a mass query, auto-delete. Make sure you're spelling the agent's name right. And you should address them by name. No dear agent. Double check the gender of the agent if you're going to say, Dear Miss So-and-so or Dear Mr. So-and-so. Most agents will let a gender slip or a name spelling slip through, but it's just nice to do your due diligence and get those things right. Do not, under any circumstances, insult the agent's genre or clients. I know this sounds incredible, but people actually do this. 
they'll say that their book is way better than most YA, or unlike so-and-so client, I'm a great writer. Don't do this. <laughs> Big faux pas, auto-delete, and word gets around in the industry if you're a dick in your query. Use a professional email address and profile photo. If you're using a Google account and so is the agent, they can see your profile photo. So don't have anything weird or obscene. It doesn't necessarily have to be your name, but it does have to be some professional. You don't want to catch the agent's eye for the wrong reasons. Don't respond to your rejections. Agents aren't expecting a response and, and most of the time it just adds extra emails to their inbox and is frustrating. I know it's tempting to ask them for further feedback or even thank them for the rejection if it was kind, but it's just not necessary at the query stage. Another one that seems like a no-brainer, but don't threaten the agent. Again, this does happen. If you are rejected, don't respond, don't threaten them, certainly don't track them down in person. And yes, these are all things that have happened. Be level-headed, be professional, and remember that agents are human. The important thing to remember with querying is that agents love books, and they are looking for books that they can fall in love with. No agent likes to reject people, but it's just a part of the business. So those are the best practices for querying. How do you actually write a stellar query? Stay tuned, that's gonna be another video. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please subscribe. Have a great day, and happy querying.